How to avoid pro photography burnout. Are you getting burned out on photography? And does it feel like the passion you had for it just probably not coming back? Well, here's what to do to avoid getting to that place. And if you find yourself already there, it's how you can dig yourself back out. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer. I've been doing it for 13 years and teaching for 11 of those. I got a lot on my plate and it's really easy to burn out when you are a business owner for a handful of reasons. I mean, one, it's a buttload of work. So much work goes into building a business and it's really lonely. Look at all the people around me right now. Yeah, so I'll like, take my laptop down to a coffee shop or my favorite local restaurant bar and have a beverage while I'm working in the evening because I just need to be around humans. It is really, really easy to get burned out as a business owner, especially in the photography world. And I'm gonna help you not have to deal with that hopefully. So five tips today to keep you from burning out or to help you dig back out of it. Number one, schedule downtime. Number two, prioritize shooting for fun. Number three, outsource everything you can. Number four, get super clear on your why. And number five, develop healthy habits. So number one, schedule downtime. I am the worst at this, but I've had to get better. I went like two years without a day off and I had a really bad burnout and uh, I got super sick and I was forced to take time off. I had to reschedule all my appointments for a week and it was not ideal and it was totally self-inflicted. And when I was in the hospital, the doctor asked me when my last day off was and I had to like go back to two years to a vacation that I had taken and it was insane that like that's how long it had been since I had had a full 24 hours of no work because even on my days off I was still you know answering messages or making sure my editor had everything she needed and just my brain was always on work so scheduling time off I now have two days a week that I schedule to be off and I get out of the house because this is where I work and I go do other things so I go rock climbing or I'll you know the first day I went to the beach and I read for like eight hours and I got so sunburned because I can't sit in the sun for eight hours. I know better than that, <laughs> but it had been so long since I had done it. I like forgot how susceptible I am to sunburn. So, so that was great. The next two weeks were spent like peeling and, and like a leper. Uh, so that, that was pretty cool. But I schedule time off and I go out and I do things. I also got really into disc golf and that's cool because it challenges me mentally. It is such a mental game and physically. And I get out of the house and I'm in nature and I'm hanging with other people or I can go by myself. And it's been a really cool way for me to get away from work and still feel like I'm accomplishing something. Because that's really what was hard for me. I can't just go sit somewhere and do nothing. That to me sounds awful. Uh, but I can go read books, I can learn things. And so a new hobby that pushed me emotionally or that pushed me intellectually and physically, that's really what I needed. So that is what I've created. And I put it on the calendar. I updated the business hours. I don't do any of the things on those days. I mean, to say I, I haven't worked on a day off would be a lie. But, you know, there are days where like, cool, I'm going to work all day on my day off, but maybe I'll do like a half day the next day to make up for it. I, I still make sure that I'm taking downtime and working on not feeling guilty about it. And you can absolutely do the same. Number two, prioritize shooting for fun. Most of us got into this because we love photography and we want to shoot for fun. So I have a handful of friends who like being in front of my camera and my stylists like doing creative projects too. So we'll get together and just do fun crafty shoots with no agenda they're not for marketing they're not for whatever uh i mean sometimes i will do things like that but but these kinds of shoots are just to be creative and just to play because i want photography to still be for me as much as it is me giving to my clients because in a photo shoot it's more of a therapy session than me creating art like yes i am creating art i love that but i'm I'm giving, it's all about managing my client's energy expectation and what they walk away with. Whereas these fun shoots are just, you know, we order pizzas and we open wine and we just play and, and that is invaluable. So we need to remember why we got into this in the first place and continue doing that so we don't lose it. So schedule some fun shoots. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, magazine cover worthy, or maybe it can be, I don't know, maybe 
do shoots to try to get on the covers of magazines, but just schedule fun shoots with no intention other than to just be creative and do your art. Number three, this has been my biggest lifesaver, outsource everything you can. This is like the biggest hang up in every business owner's development is realizing what things we need to be doing and what things we don't need to be doing. If you think about the fact that there are a bunch of other photography businesses all over the world making a boatload of money and none of them involve you. So it is 100% possible for a photography business to run without you. Your business can absolutely be the same. You can have associate photographer shooting. You can hire a marketing firm to take over your marketing. You can have an editor do all of that. You can have your studio manager do your IPS sessions and all your communications and your consult calls. You don't actually have to do any of those things for the business to run itself successfully. Now you might be thinking, but I love the editing. I love interacting with the clients. I wanna shoot. That's why I wanna be a photographer. Well, cool. You can build a business that sustains your lifestyle and that sustains itself, which will give you the freedom to then go do whatever the F you want, which could be selling or shooting or talking to clients or whatever. But the business is an entirely different entity from you and your happiness level. That being said, uh, I am very attached to my business and when it doesn't do well, I don't do well and vice versa. So it's important to make sure that you keep those two separate, you and the business. The business can 1000% run without you if there are other people doing all of those tasks. If you are the log jam preventing those tasks from getting done, then that's on you and it's up to you to change that. So outsourcing everything you can. You can get someone to help you write all your social media content and to get your email automations in place. You can hire someone to do all of your editing for you. And yes, people can edit better than you. They can edit just like you. They can do the same things that you are doing. Everything that you do can be replicated by somebody else. And we pay for everything in our lives with either time or money. And oftentimes we spend time to earn money so that we can then spend the money on other things. For example, your editing. If you wanna edit every image from all of your shoots, that costs you time, which means you might not be taking downtime like we talked about in the first point. You might not be shooting for fun because you feel obligated to do all of the work side. Maybe you're neglecting your financials and you don't even know if your business is profitable or when was the last time you ran payroll? Are you even an employee? Should you be an LLC? These are all things that you should be thinking about as the business owner, not stuck in the day-to-day -day grind of doing all the tasks. So think about every single function that happens in your business and how quickly can you get someone else to take over all of them? Because everything has to get done, but it doesn't have to get done by you. So whether it's outsourcing, it's finding a partner, to, to join you in the business, whatever it may be, you can absolutely hand it off to somebody else. And that allows you the freedom to choose just the things that you wanna do while still making money. Number four, be really clear with your why. Like really, really super duper extra clear with your why. What is your why? Why are you doing this in the first place? If you just like photography, it's gonna be real tough to run a business. When you have slow months and you're having to figure out which bills am I not gonna pay this month because I don't have the cash for that, that sucks. And if you really don't have your heart in this, it's gonna be tough. If you have a client who starts leaving you fake negative reviews online because you didn't wanna give away everything for free, you gotta deal with that BS. And if your why isn't strong enough, it's gonna be real easy to walk away. If you're not charging enough because you don't value your own work and you don't believe that what you do is important enough to charge to make this a sustainable business and to fund your lifestyle, it's gonna be really hard to continue working like this without actually making any money. And it's not about the money, but it's about the lifestyle you can afford with the money. I don't care how much money I make as long as I can travel and eat good food and live comfortably and not have to stress over things and I can go do the things I want and I can treat my friends to lunch and little trips and things like that. That to me is important. That's why I'm making this money. So get really clear with your why. And if you decide your why does not really compel you to go through everything that it takes to run a business and you'd rather just do it as a hobby and work another job, that's amazing. Thousand percent support that. 
Whatever it is that you want to end up doing, your heart needs to be in it or it's not going to be sustainable when things get tough. 100% guarantee that. So whether you want to be a business owner or not and you just want to be a photography hobbyist, they're both great. Both of them are perfect. Both amazing. Go after whatever one is the best fit for you and just know why you want to do it so that you can continue doing it when things get really tough. All right, number five, our last one is develop healthy habits. This isn't about business, but really none of this stuff is about business. Uh, it, it's just about life and managing your own health and longevity. So what do I mean by healthy habits? I mean, if you're out partying every single night, drinking a ton, smoking a bunch, eating fast food and not getting enough sleep, it's gonna be really tough to do anything functional in your life. It's not sustainable. You're gonna be tired, you won't make critical decisions, you won't be able to do the long days that are required, you know? And if you got kids at home especially, if you're working another job while you're trying to start this, you're going to need every bit of mental clarity and every ounce of energy you can possibly scrounge. So if you're drinking a bottle of wine every night and speaking from experience, that is not a sustainable way to build a business. Um, that was one of the things that led to my burnout. I was so stressed all the time and so run down. I just wanted to relax with a glass of wine in the evening and that would turn into like two or three, which I wasn't getting drunk, but just having like that constant flow of alcohol in my system, it was affecting my sleep, which made me feel more run down the next day, which would make me want to check out work early and just sprawl out on the couch, watch a horror movie and have a couple glasses of wine. So it just compounded. Uh, it's not sustainable. It won't allow you to do the things that you need to do. Now, you don't need to get up at 4 a.m. and go do a three-hour gym session every day. You don't need to drink 30 gallons of water every day, and you don't need to switch to a vegan caveman diet. Don't do any of that, please. Whatever it is that you decide to do, schedule things in your day that allow you to make healthy decisions. You know, like, um, well, when you schedule your downtime and you make sure you get enough sleep and you have water that you drink throughout the day, it's just going to make you feel better and you'll be less compelled to make the unhealthy choices. So uh, that's a really big one. So those are my five ways to dig yourself back out of burnout because that's where I was two years ago and it sucks. Uh, or how to prevent yourself from getting burnt out in the first place because I never want to go back to that place and I hope you never see it either. So my five tips, schedule downtime. Get the F away from work sometimes and do things that are actually fun. I love my work, but I need other things and so do you. Number two, prioritize fun shoots. Remember why you got into this in the first place and don't lose sight of that. Number three, outsource everything that you possibly can. Seriously, get on that ASAP, like right now. Number four, be really clear with your why. Uh, Cause when you constantly remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing, that's what's gonna help you push through all the hard days. And number five, make healthy choices. Like physically arm yourself with the ability to last and think and thrive throughout the day by making healthy lifestyle choices. Now, I got a ton of other videos on this channel about lighting and editing and marketing and all that good stuff, but this really is foundational to be able to continue doing all of those things and to do them well. So if you got any questions about this, if you have your own tips on how to avoid burnout, post them in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. And I think, you know, one of the best ways, and I can't believe I didn't think of this earlier, uh, your best ways to avoid burnout is to subscribe to this channel. I, I can almost guarantee that will help you. I'm not a doctor, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it can't hurt. So yeah, subscribe to the channel. You are amazing. See you inside.